All right, what's going on guys? Um, this is the first time I'm actually trying to make and upload a car video in the two years I've had this car. Uh, I've tried doing some stuff in the past when I was doing suspension and brake work and all that fun stuff, but the issue was it was my first time doing a lot of it. A lot of stuff was rusty. Uh, stuff didn't go as buttery or easy as I had wanted it to, so I ended up abandoning and deleting a lot of the footage. But today we got something pretty cool. Um, that will actually make for a pretty simple and cool upload considering I've already done, you know, an ignition service on this, all that in there is new. So, what we got in here today is the Yomato Racing's Snake MC Coil on Plug Kit. This is a direct fit kit that utilizes the stock V, D, F, or H series distributors. And let's go over everything that includes. So first, of course, we've got the CNC machine cap with the circuit board inside that runs the unit, a custom ignition control module that I went ahead and just plugged up so it's not all over the place, a couple plugs that I assume go to vehicle wiring, we'll figure that out, a Type-C and a Type-A plug, um, depending what engine you have, you'll run one of these. If you're H or F series, you'll use Type-A, if you're B or D series, you'll, will, you'll use Type-C. Um, if you do get those wrong, it's not that big of a deal. The car's just not gonna start because it's gonna be 180 degrees off of timing. So you'll just go ahead and swap those and then you should be working. But this thing is pretty nice, very solid construction. Uh, this is the plug for the harness loom that goes to your coils and it's threaded and the wire loom itself also has a piece that threads onto this to go ahead and keep that connection secure. So this is gonna be the wire loom here. That threaded end, or the end that threads on like I was talking about. But, it's pretty darn nice, and I like the way it's wrapped up. So we got the cap, the ICM, the loom, and then a custom CNC rotor. I assume this is a magnet here that helps go ahead and, you know, let stat figure out ignition timing. Uh, this is the second revision that's been made. So, it's been pretty cool. Um, testers have found bugs, and he's been on fixing them. So one was a revised rotor, the other was an issue with the harness that is now fixed and hopefully everything should be good. So yesterday I went ahead and picked up a set of four Denso ignition coils from a K20. Uh, I believe this one, they came out of an SI, but I believe they all use the same coils anyways. And that's also true for, I believe, the S2000 as well. And then we've got our Ekman coil unplugged plate that will go on the valve cover. Um, this might not actually get mounted down properly because the only thing with this is uh, if you notice, those little washers are gasketed, and we got some long screws. That's because you need to remove the valve cover and remove the two middle studs to go ahead and have this mount properly. And I don't know if I want to remove the valve cover and put silicone on it and then wait the proper 24 hours for the silicone to cure and ensure that I don't get any leaks. So I'm kind of not too sure how I'm feeling about it. I don't know. Maybe we'll do it, but we'll see. So anyways, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead over to the prelude and I'm gonna start getting all these slot components off of there. Regular cap, brand new with VMS wires. We'll put this away, keep these in case anything goes wrong. Now the next fun part, getting that rotor off. So these rotors are gonna have a screw. And there's an area to access them. But to do that, you either need to bump the starter or turn the crank, so. I'm going to be turning the crankshaft to try to get the screw over here. Which is why I went ahead and made sure to turn the wheel all the way to the left so that I have access to the crank pulley bolt while the car's still in here. For those wondering, crankshaft pulley bolts, 
is a 19 millimeter. Is that welder focus? Probably not. Shitty iPhone. But turn engine counterclockwise on any pre K series Honda. This is right through here. He was right there. Go ahead and get that out with a Phillips. Be really careful not to strip it. All right, finally pulled her off. She's in pretty good shape, only like a few thousand miles on it, but again, we'll put that away. I can slide this cover off. That broke, nice, not bad. I like that, I like when that happens. This right here is our ignition control module. So we're gonna need to keep note, goddamn, of which of these goes where. They use little spade connectors to connect. All right, so old ICM's finally out. I ended up having to use screw extractors to get that out. Had to drill it out, which was unfortunate. The two screws were pretty stripped and rusted. In terms of what wires go where, you notice we got a green wire, we have a faded wire that used to be blue. If you see up top, there, there's some blue kind of left over there. That's our RPM. We have a black and yellow, and then we have this green, this yellow that is supposed to have green on it, but you know, you can't really see it. So that yellow wire I'm looking at right now, it's gonna go on the right prong, the black and yellow. It goes onto the middle prong, this one right here. The actual green right here does not get used. It is replaced by the plug. And the faded one you see right there in the back that my ring finger is poking on that has the blue right up there, that's the RPM wire. That goes to this side prong. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up. So we finally got that in there. Uh, got the wiring set. I had to find another screw to put in. I couldn't find a second screw for this, so this is just kinda had to kinda chill here. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the rotor first, put the we're gonna put this cap back on and put the rotor. Which let's see, how is this gonna be done? We're we gonna kinda go like this and then go down and on or hmm. I wonder if this just straight up doesn't get used anymore. Maybe that's the case. Well, I'm gonna go get the rotor, put that on, and then grab the cap. The rotor's on, you put it on the way you put any rotor on. Now I gotta close everything up because now it wants to rain. Virginia sucks. I'll be back. Alright, real quickly, you can go ahead and watch this part just to see how the connectors actually connect. You just sort of twist them and they plug into the slots that are on the board. But real quick, I just want to reiterate for H series and F series guys, you're gonna end up wanting to use the type C connector, not the type A. Uh, when I used type A, I wasn't able to get the car to start. Ended up hitting up the developer, and he told me to go ahead and try the Type-C connection, which ended up letting the car start. So just make sure that you use Type-C. Do not use Type-A. So here, I just went ahead and I mounted the cap onto the distributor, which mounts on the same as any other ordinary cap, just with the three screws, once all the wiring, of course, is plugged in. And then, of course, the ICM pigtail goes into the four-slot pigtail that is in, on the inside of the distributor cap. And then I went ahead, plugged in the wire loom and dropped the four coils into each cylinder without them being completely secured since we don't have the plate in yet. All right guys, so I figured it out. We needed to use, what is it? Plug type C is the one that you need to use. See the light? The orange light will blink if there's ever anything wrong. It has a self-diagnostic system that the creator you know, can give you the codes for. Let's get to running. All right, so we have her out on another, we're on another test drive right now. Um, she's driving good, we're just driving her normally. Um, earlier during the first test drive, while in regular D4, non-manu shift, uh, VTEC was engaging, but it was forcing an early shift at 6,500 RPM. But if I put it in manual shift, it would go all the way up to eight. No problem. So 
went ahead and just unplugged the clock fuse to reset the ECU and TCU, letting it relearn. I'm just taking it kind of chill. It's still raining out. Um, maybe in a bit, Let's see if I can do a pull in D4 and then another pull in D8 on camera. But roads are a little wet, as you can see, and um, surprisingly the autos do spin tires. Granted, it is wet though, so I mean, I guess that's any car to be honest when it's raining out. But she's good. The highest RPM I've taken her so far on this drive was just light to medium foot. It's around 5,000 RPM. No V tech engagement yet because I wasn't pushing that hard. But yeah, so we'll keep driving her around and see how she does. Quick test. She's working just fine now. So. Alright, so sorry for that abrupt end, but uh, anyways, I just want to say thanks for watching this long. Uh, secondly, apologies that the production of the video wasn't the greatest and neither was this edit. It was a struggle to produce it with the really shitty phone and then, uh, I don't know, I guess my computer can't handle 1080p 60fps edits, so it was a bit of a struggle. Um, and of course there were hardships, you know, like having to drill out screws for an ICM, trying to get the wiring sorted, and then there was an off-camera no-start issue, I had to figure that out, figure out what was the right plug to use, and then I wasn't able to get much of any footage after running out of phone space when, um, driving around, but everything is fine till this day, um, it's been already a couple of weeks since I've installed it, and there's literally no issues for me so far, uh, just under daily driving or normal, you know, typical street car stuff <laughs> that you, you know, there's only so much you can do on an automatic prelude, but no breaking up at high RPMs or anything like that. You know, so it's totally fun. It's a cool mod. Um, you know, definitely it was way more affordable than some of the other options and a lot more convenient with it just being, you know, direct fit compared to having to go in and splice a bunch of things and then being forced to run a single, you know, variation of engine management. But yeah, overall, I mean, I love the kit. It works. It's working great so far. No issues. Thank God. Um, We'll see how it does over the next, I guess, however many years that I have the car. Um, if anything is going to go out, it would be those ignition coils first, since those were used Densos off of a K20 that, you know, who knows how many miles were on that engine. But, I mean, yeah, other than that, I've had literally no issues with the car. So, if you're interested in buying, I'll throw a link into the description. Be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed, and uh, sub in case, you know, maybe I decide to do more car content. But we'll see what happens. Anyways, everyone, take care. If you got any questions, go ahead, just leave a comment. I can get back to you literally about anything about this product. Um, and I think I've pretty much gone over everything. I'll have socials in the social links in the description if you want to check out anything else about the car or about me or anything like that. And, uh, yeah, take care.